So as usual, we will review um, and then uh, we'll finish up today. We'll go through this quickly um, and until uh, we get to the, the new stuff and everybody needs to be paying attention. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness is not an overcome. Uh, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming he was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. But to, he came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed on his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And, and obviously, this is talking about Jesus. This is telling us who Jesus is. Um, and, uh, and so before the beginning began, Jesus was already there. And if Jesus was already there, then he's eternal because before the beginning began, it was nothing but, um, but eternity, uh, and God. So, and Jesus was already there. So the state, the statement, uh, in John 1, 1, um, is all we need to know about Jesus's, um, pre-existence. Before the beginning began, the word was. Um, so um, let's uh, talk about the, the fact of his pre-existence. And it is supported by other scripture that we've already talked about. So I won't go through it again. But this isn't the, John 1 isn't the only place that talks about the pre-existence of, of Jesus. Um, and, then, and then this is, um, this is a um, prophecy of Messiah that Jesus fulfilled, um, that he was born in Bethlehem, that he was the tribe of Judah. Um, and then it calls him, uh, he, he, who's coming forth is from old, from ancient days. And that means eternal, that he, that he has lived in eternity. Um, the, um, the Messiah is called the Ancient of Days meaning he is God, he is eternal. So we see Micah even in the Old Testament talking about Jesus before he was born. Um, but the, the doctrine is denied by many, it says some. It is denied by many. Even some people who claim uh, to be in a Christian religion, some of those Christian those religions are not um, truly Christian. Um, and, and so we talked about how some people believe that he was an idea in eternity past and a man for the 33-ish years on earth and then a memory lives on now as a memory in the mind of God throughout eternity. But that doesn't make sense of what the Bible tells us. Um, and so uh, let's talk then about the importance um, of Christ's existence. Um, and, and you're going to have a question on your quiz um, that's asking about um, the um, uh, about the um, pre-existence of Jesus and and what 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 is the significance of that for our salvation? So be thinking about that uh, as we go through this um, this pa these passages. Um, yeah. So uh, so this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. And what that's saying is he, that um, that eternal life is is through God, is through Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus, you you are not saved. So when it says whoever has the Son has life, that person is saved. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life, meaning eternal life with God. Um, and be, and it's all because of Jesus. And then this is such a beautiful passage. I want to read it again. Um, if then you have been raised, this is Paul, this, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. 
when Christ, who <coughs> is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Because Jesus has life within himself, because Jesus is eternal, we too can have eternal life. Now, it's not truly eternal, because we had a beginning. Um, but we will live into eternity somewhere. Jesus has always been, and that's true eternality. True eternality is to have always been and always be. But his eternality um, is, is pivotal to our, um, our salvation. So uh, this is uh, from um, Galatians. And, and this is talking about, I think, more about the life we have now because of Christ. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So we can live a life that is, um, uh, is honoring to God because of Christ and what he has done. So um, let's talk about um, the form of his preexistence. Not like we can see it, but um, but he is distinct from God, um, and uh, so uh, he is uh, he is in some way distinct uh, from the Father. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. With God, so you see that word with God, right? So I'm I'm here in the room with you, but I am not you, right? So this is saying He is with God, but He also is God. Um, and the only way to understand that, of course, is by um, talking about the Trinity, which we did um, yesterday. Uh, and then He is truly God. He is not any. Um, he's not a lower God. He is truly God. Um, and this is what John 20, 28 says. Um, oh, I'm not going to read it again. So, so this is, we've talked about this, and this is Thomas's assertion. So Jesus showed up and with, with some of the disciples there and showed that he was alive after he had been um, dead and buried. And then he came uh, to life, obviously, after the resurrection, and he went to some of the disciples, but Thomas wasn't there. And so when the other disciples said to Thomas, we've seen the Lord, he's alive. Thomas said, I'm not going to believe it until I put my hand, my finger into his, uh, his it's actually his wrist, his hands, and, or uh, see the nail prints in his feet. And so Jesus comes back again, and Thomas is there. Uh, and he he sees Jesus. He sees the, uh, the the nails. He sees not the nails, but the imprints of the nails. And uh, and he says to to Jesus, "My Lord and my God." He believes now um, because he's seen, right? And Jesus says, "Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed." And that's all of us, right? We haven't seen what Thomas. But the, I think the most important thing about this is Thomas worships Jesus here. And there, there's only two options there. Either he's God and he is to be worshipped, or he's not God and he's not to be worshipped. So that Jesus accepts that worship is saying he says, I am God, uh, because he can accept that worship. So... Um, um, so he, just like, um, just like Thomas, we, if you are, if you are in Christ, I don't want to make, uh, any, uh, assumptions. If you are in Christ, meaning if you are a follower of Christ, you are his, he made you and you are his, you belong, uh, to him. Um, and, uh, and, and, and life, uh, true life is only found in him. Uh, and then this, uh, yeah. Um, this is a, a, a beautiful passage. Uh, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. That doesn't mean he was the first thing created. It means that he was before creation. 
For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. So he is the creator, right? Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And all th and he uh, is before all things. And in him, in Jesus, all things hold together. This is very high. Um, how, uh, so he is the creator, um, and uh, he is majesty. Um, uh, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. So, um, so this is uh, John's reaction to seeing Jesus um, in, in Revelation. Uh, and so this is, this is John writing. Uh, then I turned to see a voice that was speaking to me. And on turning, I saw seven gold, golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, like a human, uh, looked like a human, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. <coughs> the hairs of his head were white, like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. I don't know if you've ever been near a waterfall, a big waterfall, but there's that roar, and that's what it sounded like. In his right hand, he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun, shining in full strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. As, as though dead. He face planted in front of, he saw Jesus in all his glory, and he faced him. I think this is what people uh, think is going to happen in heaven. That we're going to be before the throne, and we're going to have a chance to um, make our case. Like, yeah, I know I did some bad things, but I wasn't that bad. I mean, my brother was way worse, and no, that's not what's going to happen. When, when, and this, and this is in the Bible everywhere. With if anyone gets anything close to seeing God, they go face him. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to fall on our faces in worship. Um, and and it's interesting to me because there's so many people that want to be in heaven, but they don't want to be with Jesus now. Why would you want to spend eternity with someone that you don't want to be with now? That doesn't make any sense. Um, but this is what's going to happen. We are all going to fall down in worship. Um, and, and especially those who um, do not know Christ. So he is unknown by some, and that's what it says in John 1.10. Uh, he was in the world, and the world was made for him, yet the world did not know him. So that he was in the world, and the world was made for him, but they didn't, they didn't recognize Christ. They didn't know uh, or believe that he was the Messiah. Um, I think I have one. Yeah, this is uh, from Romans. For, for the scripture says, everyone who believes in him, Jesus, will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is the Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So when we call on the name of the Lord in, in faith, then we are saved. Um, and then this is uh, verses 14 and 15. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. This is saying that we can't, we can't come to know Christ and Jesus unless somebody tells you. And, and nobody's going to tell you unless somebody is sent. There are people all over this world who live in closed countries, some of whom have never heard the name of Jesus. And there are brave souls who are risking their lives. One of them is one of my former students. 
to take the gospel where it is not heard, to take the gospel to a place that if they get if they get caught, they'll be killed. And this is what it's saying. How are they going to know about Jesus if nobody tells? Them? And um, and so he is literally unknown to these people who have never heard the name of Jesus. And what John is telling us is that that's our job. We are to go and tell the gospel to people. Maybe you're not going to go to a closed country, but you can talk to your friends. You can talk to your neighbors. Um, and you can tell people about Jesus. Um, others have heard about Jesus, but they refuse him. They've heard the gospel. These are people who have heard the gospel and said, no, that's not for me. Um, and and it's, it's rebellion against God. It's rebellion. It's rejection of, of Jesus. Um, it's, and they know they're rejecting him. So he was in the world, and the world was made for him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. Jesus came first for the Jews so that they might be saved. And they said, we don't want you. They killed him, right? They, they had him killed. So um, he, uh, so uh, this second one are, are those who know who Jesus is. They've heard the gospel and they refuse it. Um, and then the last group is that there was, it's, he's received by some. So, but as many received him, to them he gave the power to become sons and daughters of God. Um, yeah, that's verse 12. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, his own did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Um, and, and God's children, people like to say we're all God's children. We're not all God's children. <laughs> Those who are God's children are those who are in Christ. Um, so those who receive him are his, are his children, are believers. Um, and that's the choice uh, that we have. So we're going to, um, I don't think I have anything else. So uh, I'm going to give you this quiz. We're going to talk about it a little bit. You're going to work on it, and then you're going to turn it into me, and I'm going to grade it.